Hey guys. Alright, so I'm a computer science major, but I want to do a little more with what I know in programming. So I remembered in high school that we did these things with microcontrollers, or what are called microcontrollers. Um, so what it actually was, was a BS2 made by Parallax. And all it is is this chip right here. I'll make a close-up of it in a minute. So basically, if you buy this kit, it's going to tell you everything you need to know to start out. And that's exactly what it did for me. So now I can honestly say that after using this, I know all the basics and I can apply it to a lot more applications. Uh, now, of course you are a little limit with, limited with this. You, the language is pretty basic and if you want to do more advanced things, you're not going to be able to do it. So I also thought, well, what if I want to make this an embedded finalized project and put it in something? Well, it's not really economical to spend $100 on every project just for this. This board is about $100 plus the chip. If you just bought the chip separately, it's going to cost you about $30 to $40. So instead, I did a little research on which brands are better to pick out the, your microcontroller. And I went, went with Microchip or Pick Micro. Uh, that brand specifically is very easy when you're a beginner, beginner to program and understand. So I went out and bought 10 PIC 16F 1938 uh, microcontrollers. These microcontrollers specifically are great. They have a massive amount of memory, uh, a massive amount of ROM, enough EEPROM to save your data and not lose it uh, after power is lost, and uh, a lot of add-ons or extras such as analog to digital converters, uh, and pretty much anything you really need if you're a beginner and you just want to be able to understand how everything works in that microcontroller. So for about $3 each or $2 each, that's not a bad price. So I figured, you know, I'll get 10 of these and then I'll finalize it and put it in projects that I can keep around my house for different purposes. So let's move on a little bit. I'm going to show you what I did with two projects that were pretty simple, but the physics were a little harder to understand. But let me, under, let me show you guys what I've got going on right here. Uh, so right here I've got a benchtop power supply, an oscilloscope, and a soldering station. Now, you don't need any of this stuff. All you need is a couple of batteries and the microcontroller. Well, you also need a programmer, which actually programs the pick, but I'll get to that later. Um, so I just chose to get the power, benchtop power supply because it does make things easier when you'd like to power different devices. Uh, the oscilloscope, if you're doing more advanced applications, it's, it makes it a lot easier to understand what is going on in that circuit. And if you'd like to finalize projects and make them permanent, it's great to have a soldering station. So let's move on. All right. So right here you can see I have the PIC16F 1938, which is a great little microcontroller. It has a lot of memory, like I said, a lot of options, and any pretty much anything you need if you're going to get started with a basic project. Um, it is a 28 pin microcontroller so you have a lot of input output ports and you can do a lot with it and one of the nicer things about it although it is kind of a standard in a lot of PIC microcontrollers uh, it's that it has an internal oscillator so if I want to make a really cheap project and I don't want to bother putting an oscillator on the outside of it it has an in internal one and it makes it that much easier but there is one drawback to the internal oscillator. The internal oscillator is not fully accurate. So if you're going to do a timing device, technically you shouldn't use the internal oscillator. You should use an external one. So let me show you what I did next with this project. All right, so the first thing we have to do is actually power up the microcontroller. Now you can do this a number of ways, whether you take a wall power supply, a couple of batteries, whatever you want as long as it's direct current. Uh, I conveniently have a benchtop power supply so obviously I'm going to use that. So I'm going to turn it on, allow more current to flow, and then I'm going to turn the voltage up to about 4.9, maybe 4.8 because I calibrated uh, a couple devices at 4.8 roughly. Um, and now the microcontroller is fully powered up. So you can see a couple things going on in this circuit right now. In fact, a lot of stuff. Right here we have an ultrasonic sensor, right here we have a 7-segmented LED display, and right here is an LM35 temperature sensor. 
which is very accurate and very nice. Uh, what I'm going to show you right now is actually the LM35. So the nice thing about the LM35 is that the temperature that it puts out, and it actually puts out a voltage directly proportional to the temperature in the Fahrenheit scale. So if I take a multimeter and set it to 20, I can actually read the temperature in voltage. So I'm going to hook it up. Give me a second. And apparently it's 64, actually, uh, it's roughly 64 degrees in here. So it's about 64 degrees in here. All right, so that's what the temperature sensor is reading. Now, that small amount of voltage goes into the microcontroller, and it goes through what's called an analog to digital converter. And then from there, I can read that value from the analog to digital converter, and convert it into something the microcontroller can read into something we can read. After it's converted to uh, a, an actual value, I have a program or a function in the program uh, specifying what number to display on this seven segmented LED. Now I do have a couple of these seven segmented LEDs, but it's just a lot of trouble to hook them up. So I only have one hooked up and like the Multimeter said it was 64 degrees. This says 6, but you multiply it by 10. I just cut off the last digit because I only wanted to hook up one 7 segmented LED. So that's pretty cool and it is very accurate. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is the ultrasonic sensor. Now, originally, I don't know if you saw another video, but I did get the ultrasonic sensor to work with this Parallax BS2 basic stamp. It's really simple to program in this. The only difference is that when you're using these microcontrollers, you have to make the program yourself. This board or this basic this uh, microcontroller, uh, its compiler has specific commands for just that purpose. All right, so now the microcontroller is programmed with the ultrasonic sensor program I made. It was a little hard to make only because I had to convert the time it takes for the sound to come back from hitting an object to inches. So again, getting that equation to work properly was a little bit of a pain. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you how accurate this thing really is in just a moment. Um, so the first thing I want to actually show you is what's going on in the circuit. So I actually have my oscilloscope hooked up, well actually turned on right now. I'm going to hook it up and I'll show you what's going on on the side of the transmitter. Alright, this is exactly what's going on in the circuit itself. You might not be able to read it because the line is very small. So instead I'm going to zoom in on the oscilloscope and you're going to be able to see that the pulse is roughly 5 microseconds. Uh, but down here I have a math function actually reading how long that width is. So the pulse width of the high uh, voltage is 5.26 microseconds. Now, like I said earlier, I'm using the internal oscillator of the microcontroller. Technically, that oscillator isn't very accurate, and this should really be 5.00 microseconds. It should not be 5.26 or 5.24, whatever it's reading at the time. Uh, and that's just because, like I said earlier, the internal so oscillator is not very accurate. Uh, the basic stamp, however, does have an external crystal oscillator at 20 megahertz, and it's very accurate. So if I really wanted to create a timing device, I would not use an internal oscillator because they simply are not accurate. So, all right, so let's go past that. So now we have this five uh, microsecond pulse going out and this pulse is going to be directly proportional to the amount of time or uh, yeah the amount of time that the receiver is gonna actually count the time for so let me plug it into the receiver alright so this is the receiver end of the circuit and you can see a long pulse and that pulse or the width of that pulse is going to be directly proportional to the amount of distance or to the distance uh, 
that an object is from the sensor. All right, so I'm just gonna bring my hand back and forth from the sensor and you can see it obviously works. There's no problem with that. The biggest problem that actually occurs is when the sensor cannot send out a pulse that'll hit an object and come back. Uh, if that happens, if the pulse is not received back in the receiver, the circuit will always be turned on. So this is basically how it works. When a pulse is sent to the ultrasonic sensor, the receiver end of it will turn on the circuit and then it'll wait for a pulse to come back in. And when a pulse does come back in, it'll turn the circuit off. So if a pulse is not coming back into it because that, that pulse of sound did not hit an object that was close enough to it, it will just always stay on. Now, how are you gonna solve this problem? Well, in the, this is where the programming comes into play. In the programming, I just have a simple loop that loops through and counts an amount of time. And after a specific amount of time has passed that I know 20 feet it has been exceeded, I will just stop it and restart the process. And it's really that simple. Now, the biggest problem with doing that is when you're checking it and comparing the time to a value in the loop, you're technically decreasing the amount of time that this thing can actually count. So just because I'm checking, it's gonna decrease the amount of time and decrease the accuracy that the actual microcontroller can read. So the question is, how did I figure out how much time there is in each inch if I want it to be accurate to maybe, I don't know, a fourth of an inch or even more accurate than that? Well, basically, I just took a ruler. So let me get out a ruler. And I set the distance apart from the sensor as about a, about a foot which is what this ruler says. So I set the distance to exactly a foot, and then I read that value, saved it in the EEPROM, read it from the microcontroller in my software, and then that value at one foot was exactly 696 microseconds. So all I had to do was divide that value by 12, and I'd get 58 microseconds. That, so that's 58 microseconds per inch. So what does that mean? That means this sensor with the program I wrote, which could be better, uh, can be as accurate as 1 58th of an inch, which is extremely accurate, more than you're probably ever gonna need for any basic application like this. So all I'm gonna do is bring my hand closer and farther away to the sensor itself. And then you can see on the LED disp display from the other camera angle, uh, what it's going to be reading. All right, so this is five inches, exactly. And if I bring it even the smallest amount below five, it should read four. So a little bit below that is going to be four. And then a little bit below four is three. And then below three, two, one, zero. It'll go to zero at a certain point. And uh, if I, I mean, I'm sitting about two feet away from the sensor right now and my program only specifies up to nine inches. Now I can have a display that can read any value, but because I, I'm kind of lazy, I uh, only wanted to use one LED display and it'll only display up to nine inches and it won't display any decimal values. Uh, so eight inches, seven inches, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And like I said, it's very accurate. And a lot of it depends on the programming itself. If you mess up in the program, if you add something that's unnecessary, it will bring down that time and it will in it decrease accuracy. A lot of it is up to your programming skills. All right, so I hope I got you a little interested into microcontrollers after this demonstration. I want you to know that really anything is possible if you can think of it. Really, you are only limited to your imagination. If you can think it up, you can make it. So if you have any questions, comments, ideas, uh, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And that's about it. So thank you for watching.